Mr. Le Professeur, what were the key topics at ECR 2011? We have many new topics. And, uh, for instance, we, we made uh, an insisting uh, educational point and research point on functional imaging, obviously. For instance, we have a, a mini course, categorical course on uh, functional imaging of tumors, because I really think that it comes from the lab to practice now, today. And the course was entitled, uh, How Can You Improve? Implement really a functional imaging in practice. So the radiologist was supposed to come home with the recipe and the how to uh, key points in order to change the practice. So this is a topic. But what, what I would like to say is that uh, the ECR is made not only for a specific number of attendees, but for people that come from east, west, north, south, and moreover, young, not so young. And all these people should uh, find in the ECR something that is useful for them. I, I would like to take uh, two examples. So one example is uh, that we have decided not to show what will be the immediate future, but what will be the future in 15 years from now. Because the young people we are welcoming in the ECR, most of them will be in the middle of their career in 15 years. If we are not able to say today what will be the topics, what will be uh, their daily life in 15 years, how can they choose now which kind of exercise? And maybe if you have been through the topic and through the program, you have noted that we have one session which is entitled Breast Imaging in 2025. And this, uh, we, we have the question, the, only the question, will mammography still be a radiologic tool at that time? Will there still be a radiologist? Uh, what are the new tools that are going to come? And, uh, how is the relationship between the radiologist and the, pa in, and the patient in 2025? And this is very important because the, the, the young people have to choose now their subspecialty, the way they are going to work. So obviously uh, this is important for them. They have to know technically practically, legally, what is going to happen. And in the same time, in the same time, we uh, realized that uh, there was a need for uh, foundation courses, for basic knowledge. And uh, the most trivial and the largest amount of x-rays in the world is chest x-rays. And it's absolutely trivial to say that uh, today not so many people are able to interpret and report chest X-rays. Just think that chest X-rays is simple, no cost, no radiation at all. This is very modern. This is very modern. We can see so many things. And so we have organized a, a course, one hour a day, uh, that we call the Basics and more the basics, the beauty of basic knowledge. And uh, we thought it would be useful for very young people, and we have limited the, the pre-registration to 50% to maintain it indicative. And, well, it was interactive, yes, but every day we had almost a riot for people wanted to come in, and if we had a room for 300 persons, they would have been in. So it's a tremendous success of in the same time innovation, something which is the future, and in the same time having good foundation. I, I think really one symbol of the ECR is there. It is the association of uh, good foundation and innovation. And can you tell us about your view of informatics, the role of informatics today and maybe in 2025? Well, even today, of course it helps. Of course uh, it allows us to face a huge amount of information. Uh, can I give you an information and an example? Just two weeks ago, we had a problem with our IT in my hospital, in my department. There was not anymore the possibility to get the work lists. Just that made our work just impossible. The number of errors on the identity of the patients, confusion was everywhere. For a week, we were in hell. So if we do not realize today that IT techniques are not only helpful but absolutely necessary is because we have a system that never fails. Because if it fails, we immediately realize that we cannot do anything but using IT. So this can only grow. 
Our concern now is uh, the increase in information and also the relevancy of standards. For instance, if I uh, see myself uh, in the future, I can understand that there could be some problems in uh, seeing back the images within five or ten years, maybe there will be another standard. It's a problem, for instance, for image compression, image access, media for storage. Can we ensure today that we will have the same access exactly to the image within five, ten, fifteen, twenty years? Today, nobody knows. And this is one of the topics we have to work very hard on. And we, we, here we have to work with lawyers because uh, there is a legal uh, aspect of this problem. And also, I would like to say that there is no more machine for acquisition. It's not only, it's not only a sorting, making reports for acquisition that doesn't come with a huge IT content. For instance, the development of a computer at the diagnosis system is tremendous. And now it's not a question. For years, the, the, the radiologist said, well, is this CAT system doing better than I do? Uh, does it uh, help the junior? Does it help the senior? This is not anymore the question. The CAD system just comes with uh, the modality. So everything which is IT now is absolutely necessary. Can we ensure the standard? Can we ensure the transmission of the images and all the information for the patient from one institution to another one? Uh, will uh, the uh, networks uh, like uh, Internet be able to allow such transmission? Today it's not completely clear. Who is going to be the guardian of uh, images? Who is going to be the owner of images? Who can access? All these aspects are very interesting, very important in the era, for instance, of teleradiology. And I think really that we have to work obviously on technical developments, but also on legal and ethical developments that are associated with IT. And I really think that in the future, everything which is legal and ethical will be extremely important. Can you tell us about the perspectives for ECR 2012? Well, I can only say that it's brilliant because the program is uh, it's on its way. And as you may know, the program of the ECR is made uh, from the educational point of view, something like uh, one year and a half in advance. So the program of the ECR 2012 is already almost ready, although we should keep obviously some flexibility in order to accommodate some uh, burning questions coming at the last moment. And uh, like this year, it will be very important uh, to accommodate all levels of uh, radiologists, uh, advanced, beginners, old, young, from anywhere. So we, we have to uh, propose uh, really many different topics and many different levels. So what we are going to do is uh, probably to insist on the cardiovascular system and also in the neuroradiology, which is a very important uh, topic, not for the neuroradiologist only, but also for the radiologist, because any radiologist have something like between 15 and 30 percent of neuroradiology. And we know that uh, any subspecialty has two phases. One is the phases of the subspecialty in itself. It's high level, it's, uh, it's dedicated to people that are really subspecialists, but there is another level, which is the level of the general radiologist, and it is, this level is absolutely necessary because this general radiologist is the most important person uh, in relationship with other specialists and also with the general practitioners. And the clinical role of the radiologist is improving, is increasing now, nowadays because while medicine becomes so complicated that somebody has to help the clinician in the triage, in the orientation and the strategy, and the radiologist is certainly one of the best person to do that. And also I would like to add that next year there will be a course on molecular imaging because this is clearly a new frontier and we, the role of the ECR is to show the road on the, of this new frontier and to make it clear for our attendees and for our members that we should go on this road and to indicate exactly that this road is safe 
and where it goes.